All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I have been going over lectures, creating videos from the App Inventor 2 Create Your Own Android Apps online PDF book from Wolber, Abelson, Spurtis, and Looney. So far, we've gone through the first the forward, the preface, which I really didn't do anything on, but we built the Hello Per, Paint Posh, Mole Mash, and No Texting While Driving. Which brings us up to chapter five, the ladybug chase. All right, so this is building another game, and this is what we're gonna build. Now what you have is a ladybug who makes its way around the screen. All right, the ladybug eventually loses power, so to keep and get more power, the, these aphids come across the screen and the ladybug attempts to eat them. Well, while this is all happening, there's also a frog that comes across the screen, and the frog tries to eat the ladybug. All right, so as it says, the user can control the ladybug by tilting the device, view an energy bar on screen, which decreases over time, make the ladybug chase and eat aphids to gain energy and prevent starving, help the ladybug find a frog, or avoid a frog, I should say, that wants to eat it. So. In addition, as it says, to reviewing the material for Mole Mash, back from Chapter 3, this chapter in introduces multiple image sprite components. When we did the uh, Mole Mash in Chapter 3, we only had one image sprite component. Next, detilting device tilts with an orientation sensor. So the ability to go from landscape to portrait and back again. Changing the picture displayed for an image sprite drawing lines on a canvas component, controlling multiple events with a clock component, using variables to keep track of numbers, and as it says, that'll be the energy level for the ladybug, creating and using parameters that have, procedures that have parameters, in other words, things that get passed in, using an AND block. So, the application is mentioned there will have a canvas, which is what the both the ladybug and the frog will go across, and the aphids also. It'll have three image sprite components, one for the ladybug, one for the aphid, and one for the frog. There will be a sound component so that the frog can make the rivet type of sound. The orientation sensor will be used to measure the device's tilt, and a clock will be used to change the aphid's direction. As mentioned, there'll be a second canvas that displays the animal's energy level. A reset button will restart the game if the ladybug starves or is eaten or you just want to restart the game. So the components are shown here again. They'll be the canvas, image sprite, orientation center, sensor, clock, image sprite, image sprite, canvas, button, and sound. First they want us to download these files, so let's do that right away. Just going to save them all right to my desktop for to make it easy to grab them. Whoops, etc. That was the first one. Next, we've got the aphid. Dead ladybug. The frog, and finally, so that was the frog, and this would be the frog wave file. You can hear that. That's the ribbit. All right. So I now believe I have saved all the componentry I was asked to save. So let's start building the interface, okay? So it says, again, these are the images for the ones that we just did. Connect to the App Inventor website, start a new project and name it Ladybug Chase. I don't remember if I've actually started a new project yet or not for this. Let's look under projects, my projects. 
No, I have not. All right, so projects. Start new project. Ladybug. Ladybug. Chase. Okay. We want to first pull in, pull down a canvas that we'll name Field Canvas, set its width to fill parent and its height to 300 pixels. So again, we'll come in here. Under our drawing and animation, we'll grab a canvas. We'll change its name to Field Canvas. We want to change its width to fill parent. And we want to change its height one more time to 300 pixels. All right. OK. Place an image sprite on the canvas. Rename it Ladybug and set its picture property to the Ladybug image. Don't worry about X and Y properties. Those will depend on where on the canvas you place the sprite. All right, so Ladybug, sprite on the canvas. So image sprite, we'll just throw it right there. Picture will be upload file. And there's our Ladybug. We don't want the dead Ladybug. We want the Ladybug. There it is. Okay. I'll close this. I keep opening that one. We were supposed to rename it Ladybug, and I don't know if I did that or renamed it or not, so no, I did not. All right. As you may have noticed, image sprites have interval, heading, speed, properties which you will use in this program. The interval property it says you can set to 10 milliseconds for the game specifies how often the image sprite should move. Now by setting it to 10 milliseconds that's saying you want it to move every one hundredth, one hundredth of a second. So we want the interval property to be set to 10. Right now it's set to 100 so set it to 10. The heading property indicates the direction from which the image sprite can move in degrees. Zero means move to right, 90 straight up, 180 due left, and I think it's, I don't know, it's 270 or not straight down. We will change that in the blocks editor. The speed property specifies how many pixels the image sprite should move whenever the interval, that 10 milliseconds, passes. We'll also set that in the blocks editor. The ladybug's movement will be controlled by an orientation sensor, which detects how the device is tilted. Now, again, since I'm working off of a, of a laptop, this isn't going to really work. So we want the clock component to check the device every 10 milliseconds or 100 times per second and change the direction accordingly. We'll set this up in the block editor also. So we want to add an orientation sensor, and we want to add a clock. So sensors, orientation sensor, that will be coming down here into our non-visible components. All right, and we also want to add a clock, which will also come down here in our non-visible components. For the clock, we want to set its time interval to 10 milliseconds. All right. If you will be using a device other than the emulator, you will need to disable rotation for the screen. I'm using the emulator, so that's no big thing. And that's what my screen does look like right now. When you look at what's there, blow that up a little bit. All right, it pretty much looks, other than mine's position, a little bit differently. My ladybug, but everything else looks the same. Okay, let's check our time. 
We're at 10 minutes, so I'll go a little longer. Adding behaviors to the components. Moving the ladybug. Go to the blocks editor. Create a procedure. Update ladybug. And a clock one timer block. As shown in figure 5.3. So we'll want a clock one timer bug. And we'll want an update lady procedure. So let's do those. So I'm going to go into the blocks editor. I'm going to go to procedure. I'm going to go here. Update Ladybug is going to be the name. So we want to change the name here to Update Ladybug. All right. And we want to set the Ladybug heading to orientation center angle and the ladybug speed to orientation sensor dot magnitude times 100. All right. So we want to set that Heading to orientation sensor one dot angle. And we want to set the speed to orientation center dot magnitude times 100. So to do that, we're going to have to go into math, find a times block, bring that in. Whoops, bring that in. Should fit in there. I know what it is. Okay. Uh, well, let's see if we do need this. So we want that to be orientation center sensor dot magnitude. Multiply that by 100. Whoops, that was good. I hit the wrong key there. Oh, it's not the visible property. I've put the wrong property in there. What I want is ori ladybug speed. So that was on me. That should fit. There we go. All right down because I think there's something else we want to put in here and that is clock timer we want to call update ladybug all right so clock timer and we want to come in here and call update ladybug all right I think that looks just like what we see right here now, as it says here, the update ladybug procedure uses two of the orientation center's most useful properties, angle, which indicates the direction in which the angle is tilted in degrees, and magnitude, which indicates the amount of tilt, from zero, which is no tilt, to one, which is maximum tilt. Multiplying the magnitude by 100 tells the ladybug it should move between zero and 100 pixels in the specified direction, whenever it's time interval, which is 10 milliseconds, or 1 one-hundredth of a second, in the component designer passes. Although you can try this out on a connected device, the ladybug's movement may be slower and jerkier. All right, it says here, if you find the ladybug's movement is too sluggish, so it's not moving fast enough, increase the speed multiplier. If it seems jerky, meaning it's too fast, 
decrease it. So I've created this, all right? And be before I come in and run it, I should still have time. I have not started up the emulator, whoops. I have not started up the emulator, so I will do that right now. As always, the emulator rather takes a second or two to start up. And as soon as that happens, we'll run this, we'll see whether or not it works, and then we will end part one for this chapter of this lecture. And there it is. I don't see it moving right now. All right, but everything looks good as far as I can tell, the way it's currently set up. Okay, so we're going to stop part one, and we're going to pick it up with the displaying the energy level. Okay, so we'll pick it up there in just a couple.